Scanning. Identity authorized. Welcome to the Secret Superhero Club Podcast Network. On this week's episode of the ASP, we sit down with comic artist Katie Cook to discuss her comic, Nothing Special. Definitely go check it out. New season starts this Tuesday. Welcome everybody to the Animation Station Podcast. My name is Josh, and today I have a very special guest. I have author, artist, and comic creator Katie Cook in the house. How you doing, Katie? I'm good. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. So just for our listeners that may not be familiar with your work, um, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I have worked in indie comics under webcomics titles uh, like Gronk and Nothing Special on Webtoon, but I've also worked in mainstream comics. I was the lead writer for a while for My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. I've done work for Marvel. I've done work for Boom. I do stuff for Disney. I illustrate Star Wars children's books. So really, I'm just kind of all over the place. Nice. So when did you, like, how did you get your start in... Like, I mean, it sounds like you've been doing, like, comics and, you know, drawing and everything for quite a while. So how did Mm -hmm. you get your start there? I was, you know, going to comic book conventions while I was still in college showing off my portfolio. And some of the the first professional work I did, I was still in college. And it just kind of took off from there. You know, even out of college, I got a job doing graphic design. I used to design, like, toys and scrapbooking supplies (laughs) and stuff. And I would still work in comics just as as my side job. And eventually, after five years out of college, when I had been working as a graphic designer, I looked at everything I was doing. I was like, wait a minute. I think if I dedicated more time to comics and books, I could make this my living. And I did. I quit my job. Oh, man. Just like tore that Band-Aid off real quick. Yeah. it's um, My husband and I looked at our financials, and I said, I think I can make this happen. I think I can make this my job. And he was like, all right. So I I typed up my two weeks notice and then I wasn't going to turn it in for a while because, you know, it was a, it's a small company. It was a small team and I didn't want to let anybody down. I was going to finish out this last big project Mm -hmm. and then let everybody down and be like, all right, you got to start looking for someone else. And then something happened at work where I just kind of had this like breakdown moment where I went, pardon me. Yeah. And I went and I got the two weeks notice, which I had taped under my keyboard at my desk. (laughs) And you were just ready. You were ready for somebody to like, you know, turn your screws the wrong way and be like, ha ha. I have. Well, it's because I'd been having some issues at that job anyway. So it was this amazing, it's the satisfying moment of I just handed it to my boss and I said, this is my two weeks notice. And I have two weeks of vacation time that you never let me take because we're so busy. So I'm just going to go. <laughs> so That's I left. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, I've never regretted it. So uh, you were really, so in, in college, you were um, big doing the art and, you know, going to mm-hmm. the comic conventions and everything. When did it really first click for you that, you know what, I want to do this for a living? Like, this is what I want to do. I have never had another answer to the question of what do you want to be when you grow up other than cartoonist. Nice. When I was in kindergarten, I still have things that my parents kept that are like, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I would say, I want to be a cartoonist or I want to work for Disney. You know, just this, the the singular focus (laughs) that I've always had of this is what I want to do with my life. And, you know, it came as absolutely no surprise to my parents when, you know, in high school, I said, I want to go to art college. And they were like, well, we knew this was coming. It's like, at least you're not your brother. You didn't get a major in philosophy. You (laughs) You have some hopes of a career. Um, So they were, you know, super supportive throughout everything. And, you know, I'm I'm in my 30s now, but this is my full time job. That's that's amazing. Now, we're, when you were uh, a little kid, like, so you said in kindergarten you want to be a cartoonist. Mm-hmm. What were those things, like, when you were a kid that this is why, like, this is what you wanted to draw? Like, if there was some, like, was there a, a certain TV show, a genre that you were really into? You're like, I want to do this. I loved newspaper comics. Okay. Um, I, I grew up learning how to read um, on Garfield and Calvin and Hobbes and Peanuts and things like that. And it was, you know, my, my parents, you know, were both working professionals. We got up super duper early so they could go drop us off at Latchkey. 
And, you know, as my parents were getting ready in the morning, they got us up first in this huge injustice of being a child. (laughs) And they like sat us down with a bowl of cereal while they went and got ready for the day. So my brother and I would read, you know, newspaper comics as kind of this, well, let's wait for mom to go drop us off at school. And they, it was my favorite thing. And, you know, I, I really originally wanted to be a newspaper cartoonist. I wanted to do the next Calvin and Hobbes. I wanted to do something special and amazing like that. And, you know, basically by the time I got to college, newspapers were dying. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I really got to, I got to shift some, shift some gears here. <laughs> this is not going to work. And it's, it's one of those, like, whenever I see like my current job, um, I went from a larger company to a smaller company um, where my previous company, it was all tech. It's like everything, social media, everything. Now I'm at a smaller company. Like let's put an ad in the paper. And I'm like, but why? It's like, those aren't a thing anymore. It's like people don't use those. Um, So were, were there any cartoons or anything that you were really big into when you were growing up? Oh, oh yeah. You know, I, I, you know, typical kid. I loved all the Disney movies growing up and, okay, you know, well, 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 I, since, I, you, since you mentioned the Disney movies, favorite mm-hmm. Disney movie. Uh, but now it's, it's still probably Beauty and the Beast. You know, okay. I think that Belle is best princess. Um, it <laughs> holds very special place in my heart. I always, you know, it was an awe inspiring movie at that point. I mean, it was beautiful. It was, the story was perfect and you always hated Gaston, you know? And for me, it was the princess that likes to read. So it's uh, relatable oh, yeah. for me. So um, big fan since, of the gray stuff? Yeah, it's delicious. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, I, I love Tangled. I think Tangled is an amazing, amazing movie. Um, I recently got to write some of the Tangled comic books for the TV show. And nice. the char- the characters are just so charming and relatable and unique, um, you know, that I, I had a blast working on it. See, that's good because um, one of my co-hosts, Ashley, she is in love with Tangled, the series. That's so cute. Um, yeah, it's she's she's great. Um, but no, uh, so a lot of the Disney stuff, like, was there anything else, like, anything, like, other than the Disney movies that you were, like, really big into? I loved the Looney Tunes cartoons. You know, I loved Bugs Bunny. I loved... Sylvester the Cat, I loved Pepe Le Pew, I loved Marvin the Martian, you know, the, the really classic, you know, stuff that you could find. And other than that, even though it wasn't animated, I loved the Muppets. Okay. The Muppets are still one of one of the great loves of my life. Um, I have a full-size Kermit and Gonzo replica staring at me in my office right now. Um, you know, it's, so it's a very, it's a passionate thing for me. And the Muppets have always been my definition of the perfect all ages content. And it's this thing that I strive for in my own work because they're so relatable and enjoyable on all these different levels. You know, I, I have kids now and I show them Muppet stuff and they get the puppety stuff or the, the cute jokes, but there's those Mm -hmm. other layers to the jokes and the other layers to the characters that are just so funny. Um, So I hold them as, yeah, this like gold standard for me. Nice. So you quit your job. And now you're mm-hmm. sorry, completely changed topics there. So we quit. You quit your job. All right. And now you're off pursuing your career as an artist. So where does it go from there? Like where? How do you like jump on that bandwagon? Because I mean, I know you said that you were doing stuff when you were in college. Do you just go back there and say, "Hey, I'm free now all the time. Let me work for you." How, how does how does that work out? No, it's, you know, it's a grind. Yeah. Um, I think a little bit of it came from, at the time, I had a webcomic that I was doing called Gronk. And I got more work based off of that comic. You know, one of the, the mo- best things you can do if you want to be in comics is to put your work out there and show people what you can put on a page. And because of, you know, this webcomic Gronk, I got the gig writing for My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, which is a job that lasted five years, which is really crazy in comics. Um, And almost all of that came about because I I was on social media and I tweeted, hey, this new My Little Pony show is is really cute and funny. And the guy that was familiar with my work uh, through Gronk and through, I think, one other Archaea thing I'd done for Fraggle Rock, 
I was like, well, we just got the license for this this pony thing. Do you, do you want to write it? I was like, yes. <laughs> um, so I tell people it's as simple as that to break into comics. Just just say something on social media and you'll get there. Yeah. So, that's, but how, it's, that's how it works for everything. That's how it works yeah. for voice acting too. I just said, <laughs> hey, I want to do uh, Let Me Be Somebody. And they were like, you got it. And that's how it works. Yeah. So but it's um, important to have an internet presence nowadays. It's crazy. Oh, exactly. So with Gronk, um, is he what is, is he a little? I ha, I, unfortunately, I was reading nothing special today. I was going to try and read both, but nothing we're... special is the new stuff. That's the good stuff. Gronk, I love <laughs> Gronk, but Gronk is is my older comic, and now I look at, it, I was like, I used to not be able to draw. What is he? A, is he a little dinosaur? A little monster. A little monster. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, Gronk came about when I was in college. Um, I did Gronk as a character design project. Uh, we had an assignment to do a self-portrait. And, you know, self-portraits for art school students, when you are working on your BFA, are full of people doing giant nudes of themselves with, like, the eyes crossed out and, like, pictures of an apple that are like, this is what my soul looks like. <laughs> and it's everything is very deep and dark, and everybody's trying to out existential everybody else. And I came in with this roundabout of this squat green monster that had my pixie cut and i was like this is what i would look like if i were a monster <laughs> and i just remember it being up on the board for everybody cr to critique and of course there's like the big chalk drawings <laughs> like i said x out eyes everybody had darkened their eyes into like these like alien shaped <laughs> x out things <laughs> and i go up there and i tack on this green monster and i was like ta-da i made a thing and it's, it's like that moment where they're like let's just put this on the fridge and tell you you did a good job but Those i think that's best. that's always where my mindset is my mind is on how to make things fun and how to make the world more fun and how to approach things in a way that's that's charming you know i don't I don't watch a lot of horror movies. I don't watch a lot of all this stuff because I just, I like the world to be fun and weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, before we get into nothing special, um, you, you, you also work for Disney. So like you've done mm -hmm. like the ABC three PO and the OB one, two, three. Yep. Um, which by the way, did you come up with that title? Cause that's genius. Uh, that was a combined effort between me and the publisher. So I'm going to go with it was 90% your effort and 10% the publisher. <laughs> they were like two, three, and you were like OB1. Um, <laughs> so how, how did that work? So, Well, it's, like, I've been doing stuff with Lucasfilm since before the Disney purchase. Really? Um, yeah. It's, so it's been a while. You know, I was doing trading card design um, back when StarWars.com was just this like mishmash of things, you know, before before any of the new movies back when all we had of new star wars content was the prequels it was like it's dark times i remember starwars.com because i remember yeah. uh like seeing the toys for episode two and I, there was mm -hmm. jango fett and i was like who is this jango fett yeah starwars.com and that was it was basic like to me whenever i think starwars.com was like it was one big dictionary yeah, it was and like Wikipedia almost. It was, and it had a blog, and I used to do the cartoons for the Star Wars dot com blog. I was doing a web comic that tied into the Clone Wars with a couple of different artists, um, and all those were written by Pablo Hidalgo, which is now like the head of the story group mm -hmm. at Lucasfilm. So I had a history with Star Wars already. And I had done a couple of books, uh, Star Wars books with Scholastic, and then the Disney buyout happened, and like all of the book contracts were canceled because they no longer work with Scholastic because mm -hmm. Disney has its own publishing imprint. And it was just one of those things of like, oh, I guess, I guess I'm done. I guess I don't do Star Wars anymore. But I was lucky enough that you know after the purchase, they contacted me and were like, well, we want to keep doing stuff with you. So I got to to keep being a part of the Star Wars universe. And my third book, um, Search Your Feelings, comes out October 2nd. And, you know, there's there's plans for more. I, I love being a part of Star Wars. It's been amazing. And I've also gotten to do some art for the Wonderground Gallery in the parks. Oh, nice. Um, so I've gotten to do, you know, big. I did a big Haunted Mansion map that's all really cute and adorable. It has all the animatronics for the ride on it. Um, I've gotten to do 
uh, some pieces for uh, like the tiki mugs at Trader Sam's. I just started a series that's called Disney Doors that are the doors that are the um, the way you get into the attractions for all the old school dark rides like Mr. Toad and um, Snow White. So it's just, it's been, it's been a hoot. I mean, doing the Disney stuff, they are, they are great. They are fun. You know, everybody's always says, but you work for the man. I was like, I work for the mouse. You know, yeah. he's, it's hysterical. And, and let's just be, let's just be real. If Disney came and offered anybody a job, pretty sure nine times out of 10, they're taking it. Yeah. And like, like if Disney comes up to me and is like, hey, we want you to do this. Yeah. I just, I'll sign my soul away right now. That's I'll work for Disney. I'm okay mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. And you know, yeah, I have to work within the licensing constrictions, but they also, you know, like I said, they're, they're fun and they're just protecting their brand. Yeah. I might be annoyed if they're like, Hey, uh, move Minnie's bow on her head, just a, a quarter of an inch over. But it's like, why, why would I be annoyed by that? That's not my character. It's their character and they're yeah. just protecting it. Man, I wish I would have known that about Wonderground and everything, like all the Disney stuff, because I would have had Jared Mariyama on. Man, it was a missed opportunity. Um, yeah, he's an artist. He does a lot of Disney yeah. stuff. Like he did the hipster Mickey and all that fun yeah. jazz. Yeah, his yeah. stuff. Our, so cool. our listeners know him. He's been on a few times. Um, he and I are Facebook friends. Oh, perfect. <laughs> um. So we also uh, have a lot of like I'm just looking at your profile here right now, and you do a lot of the the cute little sketch cards and everything. Mm -hmm. So yep. uh, I know I know you attend a lot of conventions. Are a lot of these like um, like convention commissions or they're do convention do commissions? Lot? It's okay. a, if if it's those little watercolor ones, they're like three inches by four inches. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, people come up to me and they try and stump me, or they just want to see what I can do, and I take two minutes and I, I do a really quick sketched, quick little watercolor. Um, it's about the size of a quarter <laughs> and, uh, that's what they get. So dang two minutes. Some of these, yeah. I'm like these details. I'm like, you're really good Lord in two minutes. So that depends. Some, if you're looking at something <laughs> that is like <laughs> markers took me 20 minutes, that's something else. But the ones that are just the cute little watercolors, it's usually about two minutes. Oh, nice. So what's been one of your favorite things, like, commission-wise to, um, to you know, draw for somebody? Oh, that's weird because, you know, I, I trust I know, them. right? I wanted, to, Usually, I wanted to get one that was going to be a little bit of a little bit of a tough one. I really love when people ask me to draw their pet because then they get to show me a picture on their phone and we both get to have this great back and forth about how cute their pet is. <laughs> I was like, I get, I get the bonus that I get to look at a cute picture of a cat. And they get to show off this thing that they love. And I mean, I have four cats and two dogs. I love pets. Um, so I get really excited when someone's like, can you draw my weird dog? I was like, I do want to draw your weird dog. Please show me a picture of your weird dog. <laughs> I was uh, I was showing my friend uh, Hannah. I was at her place last night and I was showing her, you know, who I was going to be interviewing. And I was like flipping through her stuff and like she like spotted the the little Breath of the Wild link that you did. And she was like, oh, that. And so she like yeah. watched the whole entire video and was like intently staring at my screen. So, I mean, <laughs> like a lot of the stuff that you do, it's it's very it's very new. It's very – but, I mean, also like scrolling through your stuff, there's stuff in here that even I have to think about. I'm like, what is that? Oh, that's what that is. So <laughs> it not not – not against your art or anything like that, like that. It's just like I have to think about it. I was like, oh, yeah, people have some really good taste. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, um, just, yeah, just look well, at it. So, yeah, definitely, guys, and we'll put all of the links and everything, but definitely go check out Katie's Instagram and just look at all of her stuff. And now I will say your Instagram is full of two characters in particular, um, sometimes a third, sometimes a <laughs> radish. <laughs> so I guess we can kind of go ahead and talk about nothing special. It's my baby so, project. What was the so? What made you want to do nothing special? Like, what was the idea behind? Like, you know, I'm I have this story. I want to tell it. Here it is. Well, it's first. It's Webtoon approached me a couple of years ago, and they were like, "We think you have, you know, something in you besides My Little Pony." And I was like, "Well, oh, I really? used so to." Webtoon approached you. Yeah, it's you know they're oh, they're nice. like they have so many subscribers globally, and they've been trying to build up um, their U.S. brand. 
And they asked me if I wanted to kind of be part of the Webtoon family for a little bit. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember how to write things that don't have ponies in them. <laughs> it's very confusing. Um, so I thought about it for, for a while, you know, you know, several months. And I was like, well, what story do I have in me? What story do I want to tell? And I wanted to tell, you know, the, the kind of stuff that in the U.S. market, everyone tells you not to do which is one, something that is really branded for teenagers, even though it's all ages, and something that had a, a female main character. <laughs> and then it was like, and I'm very strange. So it was like, I wanted to put in this little radish guy who is just kind of this offset of how much fraggles love radishes. <laughs> so I've always, um, there was a one of the Gorgs in Fraggle Rock always had this huge radish who he named Geraldine. And I always felt really bad because I was like, it doesn't talk back to him. So this co character comes from me as a kid wishing that Geraldine would talk back to Junior Gorg. <laughs> Except as an adult, I was like, well, what if the radish was also a jerk? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, and it was, it's an, I love magic. I love adventure. So, you know, I, Apparently I you love Lord of the Rings. I love Lord of the Rings. And originally when I when I kind of plotted this out, I had them like around 13. And then I was like, oh, now I'm, I'm dealing with all these constraints and I can't deal with, you know, awkward teenage relationships, which is another theme that I love because I, I love shoujo manga. I love manga that is aimed towards teenagers. All right. OK, OK. okay. We're talking shoujo manga now. So mm -hmm. what's what's your jam? All right, I gotta go over to my shelf. <laughs> so, oh, d hey, don't worry. I'm pulling up my I'm pulling up my my manga reader, right. and I'm looking at my shelf too. So I'm right well, there with you. Well, it's, I'm looking at my bookshelf because, good lord, I keep my favorites out. Um, oh yeah, I do. Yeah. See, I do love. Like, I've got the favorites, but a lot of my stuff I... has never been released over here. Yeah. Well, it's which unfortunately sucks. Yes, but it's um I think my all time favorite, and it's it's very cliche, but it's Fruits Basket. It's it's the one that I read that I was like, wait a minute. This is a blast. Yeah. Um, and actually, when I was preparing to finally sit down and write nothing special, I kind of binged on all of this shoujo manga <laughs> because I was like, I'm going to write this, you know, my version of one of these stories. Because um, I, I, you know, I also I love the awkwardness of, you know, or on High School Host Club. I love Kami Sama Kiss. Oh, I Sama Kiss is great. I love those books i think that it's a wonderful story it's cute it's adorable it's sweet and it's got a tenderness to it so i really wanted something that was along those lines but i also wanted my sense of humor in it i wanted that awkwardness of of the new for for these young people and you know that's i've been having a blast doing that and now with writing season two because the the season is finished the writing is done um it's just drawing it now um, and I've drawn up to chapter six. <laughs> uh, but now it's like I get to play around with this character named Lasser, who in the original season is a complete jerk. Nah. And, but I get, to, but he's, he's naive and, you know, he, he's very selfish and he's very self-centered. And I get to play around with, you know, him in season two. Now that Callie and Declan have this established relationship that I, I try and portray as a very healthy thing where they, but they're still questioning things. They're still trying to weave their way around this new life that they have. I get to play around with Lasser um, and, and a tidbit that I love, and it's not a super spoiler because you get to a hint at it in chapters two and three is that he starts to learn all of his hints on how to approach an interpersonal relationship with another person through trashy dime store romance novels. <laughs> But they all have titles like The Werewolf's Desire or The Viking's Secret Romance. So he gets slapped a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, it doesn't always work outside of manga. <laughs> but, you know, that's that's the point is like trying to, you know, show how, you know, learning the ropes of how to deal with people is, is not easy. Um, so I've just been having a blast writing these guys and, you know, putting a little bit of myself into them or taking, you know, traits that I think are admirable and putting them in. And, 
you know, at the heart of it, it's also still an all ages story. You know, there's mm-hmm. nothing in it that, you know, you can't share with, you know, my seven year old reads my comic and she loves it. You know, she does an impression of Radish that has me rolling on the floor every single time. And I have to break it to her that she can't be the voice of Radish. I've already picked it out. Who's the voice of Radish? Oh, it would be Pat Oswald. <laughs> I can see. <laughs> oh, man. See, now what's bad is I'm going to re- I'm going to read season two mm-hmm. um, in October and I'm just going to be like, it's Pat Oswald. Yeah. So so who's who's your who's your dream cast? You know, that's I haven't thought of the voices because, you know, right now it's um, the dream uh, for Declan is I was looking up teen fashion because I didn't know what the teens are wearing right now. Give him K-pop <laughs> fashion. Yeah, he'll well, be he'll look fantastic. Well, it's, I saw this picture of this really scrawny kid wearing like a plaid pullover. And he had on a beanie and he had these big thick glasses. I was like, that's the human version of Declan. I saved it on my desktop. And I was like, I don't know who this kid is. It's like, I just have a picture of a random teenage boy on my desktop. This is weird. Uh, don't we all? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, for Callie. That really it's, weird. Yeah. Just, no, just there was a. That. Good Lord. There was a girl in a Duluth trading company <laughs> ad. But I was like, there she is. <laughs> I don't know who these people are. Um, so the yes, I, trading company. Is that like a clothing brand? It is. It's okay. a lot of plaid shirts and, well, Minnesota, um, that makes sense. well, it's, uh, my husband and I refer to it as REI for people that don't actually go outdoors. Um, it's, it's fashionable <laughs> plaid, <laughs> which is my aesthetic. Plaid. <laughs> I own many a plaid shirt. <laughs> it is very on brand for me. Um, but my husband makes fun of me because he was like, well, I know if you want to be fancy and spend $70 on a plaid shirt, we're going to Duluth. But, but yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's this moment of, I know it would have to be an animated show because of, you know, the way that I draw the characters and, you know, some of the stuff that's going, you know, going on in it, but mostly so I can have a radish. (laughs) It's like I want one day I want this to be a TV show or a movie just so I can have radish merchandise. (laughs) Um, it's my, my number one thing is, uh, when somebody sends me a piece of artwork, everybody draws me a radish because he's like, everybody can draw him (laughs) and I love him so much. And it it was so funny because in season one, something happens to him near the end that, oh my goodness, I had already planned on undoing that in the script, but the mail that I got after I did the thing, it was like, oh no, please everybody just wait for next week. (laughs) Oh man, yeah. When when that happened, I was I was sitting there with every like with with every I'm sure uh, with everybody else just like scrolling and be like, no, really, like for real. <laughs> and I liked your little. Uh, I I will say I do like your little like um, almost like in cat comics that you do. Mm-hmm. Like at the end, just like uh, when that happened, just like, or is is it gonna be? I was like, I bet you do. You know that that bit and. Uh, when like they're reading and they're like, I think Katie's having a breakdown. Type yep. of, those are, those are really cute. And those are really, I, I like that. It's very clever. Thank you. Um, Cause usually we just get that same old um, like, Hey, follow me, you know, type thing. And yep. it'll just be like one picture, but yours actually is, it's kind of interactive in a mm-hmm. way. So I, I, I really enjoy that. Well, it's, I think it's, you know, especially towards the end, I, I had so much fun drawing those guys and I really started to feel more about what their personalities are and how they react to things. And, you know, it's it's the first project I've done in a while where even after I'm done drawing the chapter and I'm just uploading it to Webtoon, it's like, I'm just going to do a little doodle of these guys and put it up online. So um, now you said that, you know, you got a, you got a lot of fun mail. Mm -hmm. um after something happens but what have you had any like like any like weird interactions with uh some of that webtoons community you know most of the webtoon community has been fantastic um i think the the weird stuff came after season one ended because you know i then have to i had to go on a break yeah so i could do stuff that pays my mortgage really well (laughs) Um, which is do Star Wars books. And, you know, I did a a little thing for Fraggle Rock and I did a couple other things. 
And I basically explained, guys, it's like it's going to be until October when you see this come back, you know, if it did well enough to come back, because that's also on Webtoon. If if it didn't do great, you know, they're not going to want to pay me to do another season of it. Mm -hmm. But thankfully, it it did well. And, you know, they're like, all right, when's it when's it happening? Because they waited long enough for the first one. They knew that it was probably going to take me a while to get around to doing season two. But, you know, I, I got DMs, you know, twice a week. And on Instagram going, when's it coming back? And I would say, well, I have to finish up these other projects. Then it will come back. Why can't you have it now? I was like, I know that you're all babies and you're teenagers and you do not understand the concept of waiting anymore because you can binge watch everything on Netflix. But oh my God, do you know how long it takes to draw one of these? Um, And I didn't want to release the new the new season until I had at least five or six of them ready because Mm -hmm. they are long. Those chapters are so long. That, and that is one thing that I will, like, I'm going to give you, like, super props for. Like, a lot of people are like, here's, like, you know, two or three strips and that's it. And like, I, I that, that, That's that's a lot of the webtoons uh, yeah. out there right now. And, and you but, can't, especially the way I want to tell a story, I want it to always end on that note of, well, what happens next week? There there should be cliffhangers. And people would bitch about the fact that, no, it ended on another cliffhanger. It's like, of course it did. It's specifically designed that way. It's like that no. that's how you bring people back. You can't yeah. just give them all of this in like one chapter and then they won't never want to come back. Yeah. Um, so so each each chapter ends on a very specific note. Um mm-hmm. on Instagram right now I have a picture of the binder that the script for season two is in, and you can see where I've tabbed off every single chapter break. So there's like forty tabs hanging off of this thing. And it's because it's like, that's where it's got to end. That's the beat where it has to stop. There's this. So I think that there's, you know, there's, there's an elegance in going through your script and saying, this is where I want people to stop reading the story this week. This is where it needs to start up the next week. And that's why those chapters are as long as they are. And to get that to happen, you know, I brought on a colorist. I have a colorist team. They live in Malaysia. They're amazing, but I pay them out of pocket. Um, I have a letterer. His name is Nate. He lives here in Michigan with me. I pay him out of pocket. I pay these people at my own expense for my passion project. Um, and a lot of people are like, well, can't you just make a few, few panels and throw them up? And it's like, no, that's not how the world works. And I get really annoyed when, you know, some of them, you know, post like, 15 panels and it stops at a you know really awkward point they're like i'll post more later it's like just do the work yeah then put the, it up. yeah the, those are those are i mean I, I, to me personally i i like the the longer the longer episodes so like mm-hmm. when like um like we've had uh steven mccranny on who does space boy we mm-hmm. had him on and i was doing some work with him for his uh dark horse release and he was like, yeah, I'm going to be taking like um, uh, like a two month sabbatical. And I'm like, dude, you deserve it. I'm like, you take all the time that you need. Like the fans are still going to be here when you mm-hmm. come back. Yes. You can take time. It's all right. Because the worst thing is like the burnout. Mm-hmm. And I talked to uh, I talked to Christina a little bit about that. Christina Wynn. And um, uh, yeah, and I talked to Steven about it, too. It's like do you ever get that burnout? And he was like, yeah, sometimes, but the way that he, you know, works it, you know, he can kind of, you know, take a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. But like, to me, I would rather, you know, like, you know what? I need to take three months off, like take a couple three month breaks. And like, Mm -hmm. I'm totally cool with that. Cause I mean, I would rather you finish your story than just go balls to the wall for a year and then just, you know, not put anything out. Mm-hmm. Just like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I lost, you know, my faith and my drive mm-hmm. for this project and it's done. Well, it's for me, it's, you know, I I took a, you know, I, I, I sat down. We did all the work for season one. It had 29 chapters. We did not miss a week. And sometimes it was close. Like all of a sudden, you know, I, I totally forgot about Chinese New Year. Like the Malaysia team is out for two weeks. And it was like, oh my God, what the well, ah, yeah, or like, you know, I've got a problem and then Christmas rolls around and it's like, oh my God, I can't take my, my Cintiq with me to visit my in-laws. I yeah. can't take it on a plane. What am I going to do? Buy the ticket? Um, so just all of these, you know, life getting in the way and, you know, 
powering through it, getting it done, especially with some of those really long chapters at the end uh, with her mom. And now with season two, it was like, guys, you know, I'm taking six months. I'm going to do this book, you know, and these other things that are going to pay for for me to be able to take what could be a financial risk and and now do the season two because season two is 40 chapters. That is 40 weeks of content um, that, you know, I, I have dedicated, you know, this significant chunk of my life and significant chunk of my income to producing, um, which is just crazy. And because it is, it's my passion project. So it's like, and then it's what, I got to now fit in other books around it. So if I get a Disney book, I now have to work on everything at the same time. So that's why I like having the buffer, but Oh my God, it's so much work. And to hear someone say, but you're not doing enough to make me happy. Like I will jump through this phone and I will attack your, you and everything you love. Well, it's, it's also great. Sorry. I don't, I don't mean to like uh, poo poo on listeners and everything like that, but in, in readers, but we've, like I've had the same thing. I've not missed a week since we started in 2016. Um, we've not missed a single week. Um, the latest we've ever had was a show came out on a Tuesday and not a Monday, but that was the latest that we've ever had. And it's free content. Like webtoons is free. Yes. And a lot of people are like, they expect so much. And like, how come there was no new episode or how come there was no new chapter? And you're like, guys, I mean like, this is this is all coming out of my pocket (laughs) Mm -hmm. but it's um there's a couple of instances where you know i had the episode in or the the season in and like it didn't update when it was supposed to because i'm not in charge of the updates you know i'm on the the featured page so somebody over on their web team puts it up at midnight on its on its release so all of a sudden like midnight rolls around and i know when a comic doesn't post because all of a sudden my DMs are exploding. <laughs> I'm getting emails. I've got people on Twitter going, where's the new comic? I was like, I can't, I turned it in. I don't know. And it's, you know, I'm on Eastern Standard Time and everyone at Webtoon is in California. So they're a few hours behind. So here's me like calling my editor at home being like, it didn't update. <laughs> and people are yelling at me <laughs> for the look, do something. And he's like, oh, I'll, 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 get, I'll call someone. I'll make it happen. So, I mean, you know, those guys go above and beyond for, for the readers on that site, and they deserve so much credit, especially when a, a panicked woman in Michigan is like, my thing didn't do the thing, and they're like, oh, we'll fix it right now, even though no one's at work. Now, uh, go, go, kind of going back to um, nothing special, what, like, so we have Callie, and mm-hmm. what was the emphasis, or, or what was the... Um, like the inspiration for doing Callie. Callie is my ideal female lead character. You know, she's, she's not overly concerned with, you know, she's not the princess. She's not, you know, a drama queen. She's not a beauty queen. She's just, she's really normal. She is a terrible student. She is disinterested. Like Saul. Yeah, she's a di- she's very disinterested in anything that is not interesting to her. Um, unlike Declan, um, who is you know very like he he's very he wants the world to be a, a learning experience, where she just wants adventure. She wants to be Indiana Jones, but she doesn't want any of the archaeological studies that come with it. Um, and I, I think that there's that call to adventure in a lot of young people, you know, and she's also, she's really bad with emotions. She's really, you know, just oblivious to a lot of things. So she's just really fun to write for because her reactions are the reactions of all of us that that are a little awkward and a little, you know, not quite knowing where we are as a person yet. And I, I surrounded her with a cast that, you know, also has someone who's a little self-centered, you know, mm-hmm. but then also has someone who is just very genuine, um, even though he is also a very awkward kid. And that's why I like Callie is that, you know, there's relatable things on every level. And at no point does she ever, is, is her, her goal in life is not to be number one. You know, I, I don't like it when someone's 
whole ambition is to be on top. Her whole ambition is to just learn a little bit more about who she is. Um, and that's what I like about her. So you've paired her with, and we, and we kind of talked a little bit about Lasser, um, mm-hmm. but we also, I mean, we haven't really delved too much on Declan. Mm-hmm. Yes. So did you know, like, start of everything that, you know what, I want Declan to be, um, have, have a wing. Uh, yes. Oh, uh, spoiler, I guess. Yeah, spoiler. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> the new promo. You, so you were like, I want him to be, so what, have we really addressed what he really is? Uh, that is actually book two is called book concerning two. concerning wings. Um, uh, is that the full title of the book? It is the full title of the book. That's awesome. It's, it's, the, it's the Lord of the Rings lover and me slipping out again. Um, but but yeah, it's Declan is I I love Declan. I love drawing Declan um, and his weird fluffy hair. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I always wrote him that he was going to have, you know, these these little pink pixie wings <laughs> um, that he doesn't share with her in the beginning because they're embarrassing. You know, even though he is, he's, he's, this, he's this great spirit. He is, you know, he's he's fun. He's honest and he just adores Callie. And, and he knows you know, that in his heart of hearts, he's like, I'm supposed to be her friend or or something more to her but he is so embarrassed <laughs> by these non-masculine little wings that we go through half of the story not knowing about them and you know i i, I love his tiny little wings oh, they're so funny but now book two is the the journey to go get his wing fixed and we find out all about them along the way so I am I am very pumped now because like I I, I I love Callie, but Declan like there's there's just that something with Declan and I'm like I got you boo I got you yep it's uh, like I said I love him I loved writing this season you know book one is is truly Callie's story and book two is Callie's story Callie is the main character but. I truly think that that book two at its heart, besides being Callie, you know, discovering more about about who she is and what she's capable of. It is about, you know, this bromance between Declan and Lasser and their budding friendship and Declan finding out more about this world. Like, so we're going to we're going to view more of this magical world through the eyes of somebody that didn't grow up in it. Yeah. Um. And which is great because I mean I guess spoiler ish, but Declan's parents died when he was young. Well, when so he was he's two, been, he's been living with his grandma. Mm-hmm. So he he doesn't know anything about this world, nope. which I thought was a really cool, really cool concept. Because yeah. you're like, she is like for all intents and purposes, for what we n- begin the story, um, she is some sort of. Uh, like half magical being. I don't want to yep. give away too too much. Um, she's some sort of half magical being, but she's grown up in this world, so she knows all about it. Yep. And then we have Declan, who seemingly is a normal boy and doesn't know anything, but then turns out that oh no, he is just as much as you know what Callie is, mm-hmm. except that he has more of a physical trait. Yes. <sighs> But knows absolutely nothing. And I thought that was a, I, I really like that, you know, that type of storytelling. Yeah. And, you know, I just, I had so much fun, you know, having him explore, you know, this, this world, you know, through, like I said, through the eyes of somebody who doesn't know anything about it. Cause it, it still gives you a sense of wonder at that point, you know, cause Callie knows all the answers and, and Lasser knows all the answers. And then you have Declan who still looks at the things that they think, are plebeian and normal with awe, Mm -hmm. um, which are the eyes that we're supposed to see it through. So what are you like, what is your hope for season two? Like what, like what do you want the readers to take away from season two? Uh, I'd say overall, um, you know, there's, there's a support system and friendship um, that I think is really important. um, And in, in trust and, that's kind of like, like I said, this, this book is about their friendship. It's the friendship of these, these three kids. And it is something that is low angst, 
you know, between them, all the angsty stuff happens around them, but they have this bond that has developed over time and they're just really charming together. And, you know, that's, that's one of the things that drives me nuts in some shoujo manga or amongst other stories is when there's forced angst. Yeah. And what is wrong with showing these three people that are just friends and they are, are working through their hardships together. They're learning how to be pseudo adults together. And, you know, they, they've been given this opportunity to live in this beautiful, magical world and them figuring out what their place is in it together. Now, Katie, so mm -hmm. you do a lot of conventions. Um, when, like, when's your next uh, con appearance? Well, you know, it's, um, uh, I, by the time this comes out, I will have been finishing up my last two of the year. You know, last year I did 18 shows. Oh, I took man. it down to like eight this year. Um, uh, in a few days, I'm leaving for Baltimore where I'm the keynote speaker at the Ringo Awards. Okay. And I, I am giving a speech about um, how webcomics have changed um, over time and how I think web comics are actually mainstream comics now. You can't really classify them as indie comics. Yeah. So I think um, by the time anyone listens to this, there's probably going to be a bunch of people on Twitter calling me a weirdo. Um, and then <laughs> New York Comic Con. So um, I get to, I'll, I'll be staying home for the rest of the year after that. <laughs> you will find me hunched over my Cintiq um, with very poor posture just working on nothing special until the rest of the year. And after that, I, I don't start back up until spring with um, Emerald City, C2E2, Star Wars Celebration, that kind of stuff. Oh, so you go to Celebration? I always go to Celebration, usually oh, because I have a print. Um, but I'm really excited because next year it's in Chicago. Because for me, Chicago is a four-hour drive instead of me hopping on a plane to go to Anaheim. Yeah, that is nice. Are you going to make it out to uh, D23 this year? Or you know I guess they, technically next year. I think that it's it's one of those that if they ever asked me to come out and do a book signing, I would. But good lord, it's <laughs> I'm in California enough, and you know if I do D23, <laughs> someone's going to ask me to come into the office and talk, and I don't want to take a meeting. <laughs> well, because here's the thing: we may or may not be going to D23 again this year. So if you're <laughs> there, let us know. We would love a book signed. Will do. All right, Katie, say, thanks so much for coming on. This was a blast. No, thank you so much for having me. Um, and now where can all of our um, wonderful listeners find you? Social uh, media-wise. You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Katie Can Draw. Um, I guess I have a website that I'm really bad at updating at katiecandraw.com. Or you can find Nothing Special on Webtoon. Please go read it. Like I said, it is my baby project. It's my passion project. I talk too much about it. I post too much about it but it is the most fun I've had making comics in 10 years. Oh, nice. And we're going to put all of those links, including the Nothing Special link, in our description. So all you have to do is click on one of those. And plus, I mean, Season 2 comes out October 9th. So, I mean, in a few days, guys. So yep. go ahead, binge this episode, and then go – well, binge this episode. Listen to this episode. Pause this episode now. <laughs> go read nothing special and then you can come back actually you've probably forgotten already so don't worry about it it's and okay. you, you can sign up right on the site um to subscribe to it and they'll send you an email reminder every tuesday when it updates so you don't exactly. even have or, you don't even uh, need to remember yourself do, do those push notifications guys it'll mm -hmm. pop right up on your phone and you can just click your little thing on your phone and it'll launch you right to the new chapter and then if it doesn't update you can dm me and i'll <laughs> And I'll call Webtoon and make everybody's life miserable. Oh, man. Uh, so, yeah, again, guys, nothing special. Season two, it's all about friendship concerning wings. Uh, basically, it's friendship is magic, um, literally, because <laughs> they're magic. Wow, I'm I'm tired. I need to go None to bed. That. That, was, that was bad. Um, so you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh L. Kane. You can find the podcast on Twitter at Animate Podcast, on Instagram at Animation Station Podcast, 
Facebook and Tumblr at Animation Station Podcast. All of our episodes are available on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Play, anywhere that you can download a, 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 a anywhere that you can download a webtoon. We won't be there, but anywhere that you can download a podcast, you can definitely find us. Um, you can also go to our website, Animation Station Podcast. Dot com. Again, Katie, thanks so much. No, thank you. All right, so for the Animation Station Podcast, I'm Josh. Oh. I'm Katie. I'm Katie. I Bye. didn't know that was a prompt. <laughs> I know, that's the whole point. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.